Ten words she says to do it. Not so, so fine. Not so, so wonder. Not so, so fine. Ten words that he did do it. Not so, so fine. Not so, so wonder. Not so, so fine. I say not so, so fine. Not so, so wonder. Not so, so fine. I say not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Ten way Jesus did do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Ten way Jesus did do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. More talk, more talk. He give me love, he give me salvation, not so so fine. He give me success, he give me good health, not so so fine. Ten way that he did do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Ten way that he did do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. He give me job, he give me blessings, not so so fine. He give me family, he give me good friends, not so so fine. Ting way that he did do it, come on, not so so fine. I can not so so wonder, not so so fine. Ting way Jesus did do it, I tell you so so fine. Not so so wonder, not so so fine. I said not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. I say not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Ten way that it did do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Yes, people. So I'm totally and completely excited. It's a brand new week. The Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be stupendously glad in it. Of course, when you trust God. And you look to him and you depend on him, you rely on him, a lot of amazing things get to happen to you. We're not saying that it's going to be trouble free, but we're saying that um, you would relate with the trouble, the way you would act, the way you react to whatever is going around you is going to be different because you have God. And so what do we do in a chapter a day? We come here to study the word of God, encourage one another. Get to know who we are in Christ, the things we should and should not do so that we can live a beautiful Christian life. We can live a beautiful Christian life here and earn and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. That's the whole idea, heaven in view. We want to end up in heaven, but we're not going to live a mediocre life here on earth because we're here on earth and we're not of the earth. No, God taught us to pray and say that kingdom come. So we're supposed to experience heaven on earth. I always give the ambassador kind of example. We all know it. I always say it almost all the time. You know, an ambassador to a country does not suffer if that country that they are in is suffering. Mm -mm. Because their economy is not of that country. Their economy is of their own country. So if it's not their country suffering, then they can't be suffering in this country that has a problem. No. So yeah, that's what we do in a chapter a day. And of course, we sing like you just heard us. If you're just watching the rebroadcast, we sing. And then we come right on here. We pray, hand over the session to God. Then we get the birthday party where we give people shout outs and then we pray for them. And then we get the Bible party where we read a chapter of the Bible. And uh, today we are actually supposed to be reading George's chapter 17, I believe. And George's chapter 17 has some really short verses, I think 13 or so. Um, I forgot to open it. And I was going on to open it and then I got distracted. Oh my God, you guys should forgive me. So of course, today we're doing George's chapter 17 and I think he has 13 verses. It's very short. So the first things first, we hand over the session to God. After handing it over to God, then we go to the birthday party. And after the birthday party is the Bible party. What are we waiting for? Father, we thank you for this day. You've made we rejoice and be glad in you. We thank you for your goodness, loving kindness, tender mercies, your faithfulness, and all the amazing things you've done for us, you're doing and you're still to do because in everything you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. So Lord, we say thank you for today. We thank you for health and strength. We thank you for a brand new week. We just are in awe of your goodness, your loving kindness. We 
just are in awe of your favor. We just are in awe of all the amazing things that you keep doing in our lives every single day. Father, we say thank you. We just bless your holy name. We just magnify you because you deserve all the praise. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you always, always hear and answer us. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and held throughout this session of a chapter a day. Come and take preeminence. Let your will prevail over mine. Let none of me be seen or, or felt or heard here. It's going to be all you from the start to the end of this session today. Come and take over. We'll surrender it all to you. I'm just a vessel to be used to be used by you. So Lord, use my mouth, use my 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 lips, use every part of me to make this session worth the while. Speak through me to each and every one of us, me inclusive, because I know that we all are at your table today to sup. Thank you, Lord, because I know you always hear an answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, people. Okay, so the network is still acting up, but we're going to do this regardless. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley deep enough. We're going to do this. We're unstoppable. Okay, so we have just two people that are born today. I actually got to know that one person was born today, today. <laughs> so that's a nice one. Um, I had gotten to know her before now. So that's in the person of Mam Zerubabe Herald. I've gotten to know her way before now, like months before now. But I never knew that today was her birthday. So I finally found out today was her birthday. So happy birthday to you, Mam Zerubabe Herald. I pray that God is going to bless you tremendously. The one thing I know her of is that she loves God and she's just so sold out. You need to listen when she's doing devotions. We're in a group. That's where I met her though. On Mommy Kate's platform. That's where I met her. And we've become really like family on that platform. I really like it there. And Mom Zerubbabel is there. So she does devotions some days. Oh my God. It's spectacular. You know that someone was in the throne room of God receiving Rema. To come and deliver to God's people, you know. So I'm really, really grateful that um, I w I'm a part. Or should I say I was a part? No. I'm a part of um, virtuous single mothers, you know. Some people are going to be like, oh, are you, are you saying that you're a single mother? Or what are you saying? <laughs> no, it's not everybody who is in that group, who is on that group that is a single mother. There, there are people there who are not single mothers. So... Don't freak out. I'm not, um, I have a son, but not like I actually gave birth to him, but I have a son and he's very cute. And a lot of people really know and believe that he's my biological son because we resemble like crazy. We resemble like, <laughs> like, I mean, like, like resemble, like seriously resemble. Okay, so maybe it's because I've always been calling him my son from when he was born and till date. So I guess God just kind of decided that, okay, since he says he's your son, okay, I'm going to really make him your son. I'm going to resemble like crazy. Welcome, Bobo Sky, Mr. Isaac. Hey, to say, hope you're good. good. Okay, so let's get on with the birthday party mom zerubbabel happy birthday to you your devotions are quite inspiring they're life-changing they're transforming keep doing god and keep serving god unapologetically and he's going to surprise you he's going to wow you the next person last but not the least is mr tapati kings mr tapati kings is an amazing content creator he's an amazing producer He's an amazing media personality. It's, it was like miraculous how we met. The truth is we met by mistake. So I, I was thinking, I thought he was someone like one of my, my classmates 
my schoolmates when we were in um, high school, his name was Patrick and we used to call him Patty. So I got on Facebook and this name pops up and says, um, we have the same mutual friends and stuff. And then it wasn't his picture that was on his profile either. That was some other person. So I went and wrote to him and I'm like, oh, it's been long and everything. And then he was like, are you sure you know who you're talking to? And we're trying to just get on the conversation. And I got to realize that it wasn't the person I was thinking. And I was, I felt a little bit embarrassed, but he was like, no, it's okay. Sometimes we make those mistakes. I was like, that was so nice. Sometimes some people who just insult you, they'll feel like, you're just badgering on them and you're pretending that you didn't know they were the ones and stuff like that. No, he was not like that. He was very nice. And he was like, oh, so what do you do? And then we just started talking. We became really good friends. Oh, my God. And then I remember saying to him sometimes that he was going to produce me or something, you know, but it wasn't going to be music. He said, I can't remember what he said. And then all of a sudden he was supposed to produce me because of the, um, chaotic scenario in my country right now we couldn't get on with that program he was supposed to produce me on a certain news broadcast and a certain program arrived lovely i was gonna be the one to wake people up in ambazonia how cool is that i i would i just loved the whole idea but i guess god didn't want us to do that so because i couldn't appear because I couldn't appear on that TV, so we ended up not doing that program. I felt so bad, but I couldn't help it. We could not risk it, you know. Family's there and all that kind of thing, so we cannot put family under danger just to please me because I have to do what I like, you know. So we had to change that program, and we're hoping that someday we might get to do it. Like, I'd be the voice that will wake you up from sleep. Would that be cool? <laughs> Oh my God. Welcome, woman of God on fire, Mom Tipo Melvis. Oh my God, her daughter's birthday was yesterday. The daughter resembles her like crazy. It's like she just vomited her out of, you know, that's how they say carbon copy. The daughter is a carbon copy of this woman. Oh my God. Welcome, Mom Fortuna Teflon. Welcome, Mr. Bobo Sky. Welcome, every single person who is in the live stream. Please don't forget to share, 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 share. So that people can come and let's get blessed together. So that's how I got to know Mr. Tapa the Kings. And we became really good friends. And he's really an amazing person. He's very friendly. He's very welcoming. And of course, he relates with people. I mean, like, at, at the very least level. You know, there's some people that with their qualifications and their status, they don't, they kind of look down on people. He doesn't. And that was what really stood out about him. And that's why we're able to even continue the conversation because I just don't like people who are full of themselves. I feel like I don't have anything to give you or I don't have anything that I can do in your life that can be a plus. Since if you're full of yourself, it means that you already have it already. You already have everything. So there's basically nothing I can give you, you know, like that. So I, I don't really get close to such people. I'm the person who can make friends with just about anybody. But trust me, there's some people that I would so run away. Mm, when it comes to them, I'll run away. So, happy birthday, Mam Zerubabel Herald. Happy birthday, Mr. Tapa the Kings. God bless you all tremendously. Okay, that's it for the birthday people. Let's pray for them and get started with the Bible party. It's George's chapter 17. And I got it right, people. It was 13 verses. I really did get it right. So it's good to always peep through these things and then be sure before you get on so that even if your internet is trying to play tricks on you like it's doing right now, I'm supposed to be reading on my laptop and it has been booting like for the past since we started a chapter a day. Can you imagine? For the past 15 minutes, people, for the past 15 minutes, this has been booting. It's not coming on. But thank God for my other phone. So I'm going to use that one, which also needs deliverance, but... We thank God that she's alive. Okay, so let's pray for the birthday people and then get right on with the Bible party. Father, we pray, oh God, that you bless your children. Bless them in a very special way. We use this too as point of contact to pray for every single person who was born on this particular day, oh Lord. Let your blessings flow upon them like a 
wind, a mighty strong wind, oh Lord. Let it surround them like a shield round about and no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that you're going to cause them to increase and they'll increase in wisdom and start to gain in favor before God and before man, Lord. That there's going to be blessings overflow because you're going to release your choices, blessings upon their lives and people come in contact with them because of the overflow. Literally, rub off from the blessings from these people, Lord. Divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate. Lord, they must fulfill purpose. And so as they're on the track, on the way to fulfilling purpose, there comes a time in everybody's life where we feel overwhelmed. We feel like we don't want to do it. We don't want to go there. We just don't want to get this. And then you come with your loud and clear voice saying, this is the way you walk down in it. So these people are not going to stray the part. They're not going to miss it. They're going to stay on course to the glory of your name. And people will see your good works in their lives and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Take preeminence, but now forever, mom, because you deserve it. But I pray perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sounds 126 state, continuous state of laughter and singing and rejoicing because that's what you do. Write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as they grow. And Father, I pray that you're going to open doors that no one can shut and shut every door that is not of you. Give them opportunities that will cause them to expand, that will cause them to explode and get to the top and teach them how to stay at the top permanently. They're not only going to get to the top, but they're going to get there and stay there permanently. And we know that only you can teach us how to do that. So teach this one to do exactly that to the glory of your name. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and world changers. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray, bless whatever their hands, the lady hands on, bless it, prosper it. And for those who, whatever, wherever the tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession, Lord. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their life. Favor meet favor in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, do good for them beyond their reasonable understanding, oh Lord. Father, that you're going to do mind blogging things in the lives of this one, so Lord. We thank you. Let them be able to know those they're supposed to be destined to help us to and strategically position themselves to help these people as much as you are going to put their own destiny helpers all around them so that when it's time that they also cry out for help, help is going to be made available for them in time. They're not going to miss it. Thank you, Lord God. Let money meet money in their pockets. Par, far, favor me, favor in their lives. I should clothe them with a garment of favor, praise, and honor. Father, I pray, O oh God, that their light is going to keep shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Father, I also pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach them to do your ways, to do things your ways and your will, O oh God, so that they'll truly be the manifestation to this growing nation which is waiting on, on for them, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that wherever they tread their feet upon, you give it to them as a possession. Let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Thank you, Lord, because we know you're a prayer answering God. And what you say you would do, you would do. You say we should call on you and you answer us and show us great and mighty things which we've never known. Lord, let that be a practical reality in the lives of this ones in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've heard and answered us. We seal every prayer with the blood of Jesus. We pray that you give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in their lives, so the prayers, amen, amen, with the blood of Jesus, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Yes, people. Let it be. Happy birthday. We wish you all the very, very, very best. And if Christ star is to come, this is going to be your best birthday yet. And you come here to testify of all the amazing things that God will keep doing in your life. When you think God has done too much, oopsies, he's going to do it again. Okay? Snatch his tongue is going to come alive in your life. 
Let's get the Bible party started. Get the Bible party started. Ready or not? Here I come. Ready, ready, ready. Here I come. Let's go. Who's with me? Georges chapter 17. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother. Sorry, people. I was an outside. Georges chapter 17. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursed, and speakest of all in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image. And they were weaker. And the man Mika had an house of gods and made an effort and teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me. And be unto me a father and a priest, and I'll give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now know I that the Lord will do me good seeing I have a Levite to my priest. This is the word of the Lord. We say thanks be to God. That was a short one. Well, well, well. The first thing I saw here was someone who was not really a very sincere person. And of course, he stole his mother's silver and all those things I don't know why sometimes we make these mistakes of taking things that had been duly kept for us and we take them and we miss out because whatever it was intended for cannot be done anymore because we took it the wrong way it's not right to take something that is not yours without asking you have to ask and almost almost no it's not even almost the mother had already cursed someone the mother had already cursed the person who collected the money and ended up realizing that it was a son she immediately changed the curse and said blessed thou be my son see we should be careful how we curse people how we throw curses all around you know curses are not even good it's not even good to curse people let it be that the person did the thing and then a principle is following that is going to happen to him that because he stole, he's cursed. Because he stole, these kinds of things could happen to him and all that. Let it be that it's a principle. Let it not be that you're the one who said it. We need to be very careful. See, God is content and we need to come to that place where we also have the habit of God. Seeing people come to repentance. That's what God wants. So we need to learn how to do that. We, we have to, we don't have a choice. We have to learn how to do that, you know? So, um, these people were all, she should have even said something like the person who stole my money. I'm praying that the person should repent and come and restitute and come and give my money back. Not just cursing the person. See, it turned out to be her son. 
What if the curse was irreversible? These are some of the things that get to happen to us because we're too quick. We're too fast to curse people. Sometimes we might even curse out on people. Meanwhile, the money is still with us. I remember watching a movie where they were treating this girl so badly. The woman kept misplaced her money. She placed it in the wrong place and she was looking for it everywhere. She couldn't find it. And then she beat this girl and she beat the house help, beat the house help. And then she finally found the money. Go and apologize to the girl now. She refused. Who? That she's going to apologize to the girl. Can you imagine? She misplaced her money. And then she beat someone else for it. And then when she found out that what she did was wrong, she could not even apologize. How bad? How sad can it be? How bad can it get? It's that bad. But anyways, that's just by the way. Some of us, a lot of us will also do those kinds of things. Also do those kinds of things. You say some things to some people. You argue with people about some things. And then you end up realizing that you were wrong. You have to go and apologize. But most of us, we don't. Oh well, yeah. Most of us, we don't go back and apologize. We have to apologize when we do wrong. We have to. We have to apologize when we said some things that were not true. I I always come here. If I remember something that I said that wasn't right. Oh my God. I'm going to come and apologize here. I'll not say, oh Lord, I'm sorry. And then say quiet. No, I'll come on Facebook because it was on Facebook. I made a mistake. I'll come back on Facebook and correct it and apologize. Because some of us were so scared of admitting that we made mistakes. You're human for crying out loud. You are human. So there's a possibility that you can make mistakes. We're striving for perfection, but we're not perfect yet. So you can make mistakes. If you make mistakes, own up. Apologize. Own up and apologize for your mistakes, people. So this is exactly what was happening here. And this woman had already cursed the person without even just finding out. She would have even prayed for the person and said, please, I'm hoping that the person who did this is going to bring my money back and everything and all that. Oh, she had already cursed. I don't even know what the curse was, but I'm sure the son probably saw that the curse was very serious. So he came and gave the money back. <laughs> Funny enough, the money was even kept to do something to his favor because he was a man who likes many other gods. So the mom wanted to make him some gods to put in his house. Oh my God. Sometimes some of the things that people do for us eh, is actually taking us into more trouble, more and more trouble. Because those gods that he was keeping, they were not right. And they said, this is the state that Israel was. Everybody was doing what they felt was right for them. Everybody was doing their own thing. I, if the world is like that, eh, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be disastrous. Like everybody's doing what they like. <laughs> if you know what some people want to do to you, eh, and that's what will make them happy. That's what they like. Some people just want to deal with you because you're fulfilling purpose, because you're doing what God wants you to do. So what they might like to do to you is blackmail you or deal with <laughs> God help us in Jesus name. I saying, let's not get to that place. We don't even want to get to that place. And that's how it's going to be during the tribulation. Because I believe it's going to be lawless. Everybody's just going to be doing what they want to do. And every, oh my God. Mm -mm. So they went on and he was staying with this kinds of gods. And the mom actually went on and did it for him. And then and a Levite was walking around and looking for a place to stay. He wanted to find a place to stay. And then he ended up staying there. Um, I'm hoping that this Levite is going to be able to change things for him. But the good thing that I, I, I read there that made my heart really glad, I made my heart really, really excited, was when the... What, what really gladdened my heart was when the guy said, because a Levite is in my house, I know that God is going to bless me. See, it is always very... It's just a beautiful thing. It just makes my heart this jolly. Like, when I hear how people recognize the grace of God like when they know that because of God this and this happened because I was connected to this person who is connected to God genuinely this and this happened oh it makes my heart so sweet like it just I just feel like dancing you know like oh my god that is a beauty and I tell you the truth people of the world know how Christians should behave sometimes they even know it more than we do 
because some of us don't even study the Bible, but some of them seem to study the Bible. I'm telling you guys, like when I was in high school, I actually did religious studies up to high school and I wrote it in the GC. I was studying just to pass my exams and I used to remember what I dealt with some people who were coming to preach the gospel to me because I knew the Bible. Funny enough, Christians are supposed to be studying the word of God because the word of God is power. The word of God is like the sword of the spirit. That's what you use to fight your battles. But it looks like children of God hardly study the word of God. Thank God I was coming from a place where I had studied that because I wanted to pass my exam. So there were some of the things that I still in my subconscious that the Holy Spirit normally brings to remembrance when the time is right. And I'm like, wow, you know this? Well, you... Sometimes I think it's just an English adage. Meanwhile, it's in the Bible. The Holy Spirit just brought it to my remembrance because I read it before. A lot of children of God do not study the word of God. That's why they don't even know what they're supposed to be doing and what they're not supposed to be doing. I had a conversation with one of my little sisters recently and everybody has the way they see things or the way they think of things. But that you see this particular way does not necessarily make it right. And we're talking something about music. And I said, she said, she listens to secular music. So it's not a problem. And I said, there is a problem because every music is inspired and it goes beyond just your physical understanding. It goes to a spirit and soul kind of bonding when it comes to music. I'm saying this because I've been there. I'm there and I'm growing and still learning continuously. So if the music is not inspired by God, it has a way it can actually distort your system. Yeah, I know some people are going to come at, come at me with the thing of, oh, there's some songs that are socially good and all that. My issue is not whether the songs are, are morally good or they're not. No, that's not a problem. Who inspired it? Because it's the, it's, the, it's the person who inspires the song that will be ministering to you. So would you just sit under any kind of ministration because it sounds okay? I'm telling you guys, there's some gospel music that I can't even listen to. It doesn't feel inspired. It doesn't click like an inspiration. You know how the, the number of people that have told me to keep singing, to, to release an album? Album from where? Shabi, don't release album when God has given you songs. God has not given me any songs. Every song that you ever hear me singing is people's songs that I sing. Album, no day the matter. Let's not get it twisted. So now because people think I have a good voice or God has given me, blessed me with a good voice and then I just go and pick a Bible passage and then start putting melody to it and then expect that people are just going to love it. They're just going to fall on it because it is the word of God that is in the song. No. God is not a God of mediocrity. That's why he makes some people who can sing to sing. I mean, they are singers and they are singers. There's somebody who sing here and heaven will come down. There's somebody who sing here and you will feel the weighty presence of God. You will feel the Shekinah glory of God. Just like there's somebody who beat the drums and you'll be like, what? Just like there's somebody who's going to ride a taxi and you'll be like, wow. Just like there's somebody who's going to sweep the streets and you'll be like, wow. Some um, a man of God says, be if you're a sweeper. So sweep the streets that heaven will say there was once a man or a woman who swept the streets so well that nobody could replace him or her. You want to do anything? Do it so well. So when you do it well, people will see God's works in you and say, the Christians didn't wake up and call themselves Christians. People saw the way they were living their lives and they knew that this was the life that Christ was living. And so they said, this once I've been with Christ. See, it sweetens and gladdens my heart when people say they believe that I have a connection with God. Like they can see it from my actions. They can feel it from my words and all that. It really gladdens my heart. Because yes, I truly want to serve God with all of me. I don't want to be partial. I don't want to be one leg in, one leg out. I truly want to totally surrender to God and really, really serve Him. But there are some people who are one leg in, one leg out. Like a certain man um, said, I, I don't know if it's Mr. Hal, uh, Alison Hysentio. 
I don't know if he's the one who said it, but I think he might have been the one. He said, there are lots of you who are young people and you're about to get married, you're in courtship and you're talking about basic things like, should we kiss, should we not kiss? You're asking questions like, should we peck, should we neck, should we do this one and do that one and do that one? Meanwhile, there are other sets of people who are also engaged and they're in courtship and they're asking God in prayer, Lord, where else can we, can we, can we, which other territory is there for us to occupy? Where can we go and do evangelism? Where can we go and win souls for the kingdom? Where can we go and depopulate hell and populate heaven? You're here still talking about baby things. Should we peck? Should we neck? Should we kiss? Should we not? Should we? See, when you're fully serving God, eh? Some of those things will not even be on your mind. As in, you won't be thinking about them. Because when the time is right, those things will find their place. They will find their expression naturally. Yes, yeah, so don't get it twisted. You are a sexual being. That's how you were created. So when it is time, those things of your body, they will find their expression naturally. So, you know, oh, it's not in the Bible. So it means we can't do it. <laughs> it is well so if god is standing in front of you and you're in courtship with a girl or you lady you're in courtship with a guy you will kiss the guy in front of god because it is not in the bible for real because sometimes we do these things like we don't have a conscience and the bible says if our conscience our normal feeble conscience can police us around what more of him the holy spirit are you kidding me right now you think the Holy Spirit is going to see you doing something wrong? It's not going to tell you. The reason why sometimes we stay in those things and we're doing them is because the Holy Spirit convicts you, convicts you and convicts you. And at some point he lets you be because the Holy Spirit will not strive with man. He doesn't strive with man. And so at some point you get a seared conscience. When you get a seared conscience, it's that time where whatever the Holy Spirit is doing, you don't feel it, you don't hear it, you don't sense it. So you start feeling that, no, the thing is okay. No, it's not okay. It's you with the problem because now you've had a seared conscience. And that thing doesn't seem like a bad thing. And it's terrible because when you don't see the bad in something, you don't see the reason why you should stop it. Or you don't see the reason why you should find a solution to it. That's how it works. So yes, people, this man, Mika, he knew exactly how children of God were going to do. He knew exactly what comes from, from children of God. Like we're praying today for the birthday people and saying that because of the overflow of the blessings, people are going to literally rub off of the blessings, right? This is the Mika guy rubbing off of the blessings of the Levi priest. He says, I know that God is going to bless me. He knows. He's sure. Some of us children of God, we don't even know. That that's how much power we carry. We don't even know that those are the things that are able to come out of us, are able to happen with us or around us. We don't even know. But unbelievers know very well. If you doubt me, why would, why would an unbeliever tell you that and you claim you're a child of God, see what you're doing? It's because they know that as a child of God, you shouldn't be doing that thing. So sometimes we're the ones even disgracing Gosha. And it's so sad, eh? Let's snap out of it. Let us snap out of it and start making God proud. Let's snap out of it and start making God proud, people. We need to make God proud. So, yeah, this is basically what I learned here. That um, we should not be fast to curse people. Rather, we should pray for them that they should repent and, if possible, do restitution. And so his son saw that the curse was so serious. And then he went and gave it back. And then she... In, she immediately countered the curse that she had done with a blessing. So it's not so bad if you're going through some things now based on your confessions that you're made or some declarations that were made over you. It's not too late to cancel them. It's not too late to counter them with good words, with, with, with blessings, with the word of God and all that. It's not too late to counter them. So the woman countered that curse that she had already made. See, it landed on her son. It could even be that she was not sure where she kept it and she had misplaced it too. So we need to be very careful about that. And of course, we know that when we connect with children of God, there are lots of things that we gain from them. Just like Mika was connecting with the prophet, with the priests. And he knew that he was going to get blessed because that priest 
is a child of God. So can people really look at you and say, oh, we want to serve your God. We want to do this with you because we know that your God is going to favor us in the process. Can people truly say that of you? It's a question you need to answer by yourself. So this is where we're going to wrap up with a chapter idea for today. I'm grateful that you all came here. God bless you. I really, really do appreciate you for spending, for giving me this chunk of your life, like five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. We all have 24 hours of life. And so if you're giving me like five minutes or 10 minutes of your life, it's a big thing. It's a huge thing for me. I don't take it for granted. I really appreciate you. God bless you so, so very much. We have our audio Bible on TikTok. We have it on Facebook. We have it on YouTube and we're soon going to have it on Instagram. We're hoping to create a whole new account for it. We don't want to mix it up with anything. We want to put it on a whole new account on its own. So if you're studying the word, you're another thing. You're just studying the word. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We pray, oh God, that this word is going to be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts and we're going to be able to leave thereby. Lord, that you're going to transform our hearts and help us to be receptive and accept um, all the Help us accept all the directions, chastisements, corrections, and everything that comes because you're not going to chastise the one you don't love. You chastise only the one you love because offense don't have anybody to chastise them. But Lord, we are your children. And so even when it's correction, reproof, or learning, or relearning, or unlearning, Father, I pray that you're going to continuously teach us. We're ready. We surrender totally at your feet to learn and to grow and to be the kinds of people you want us to be take preeminence but now forever mom because we know you always hear and answer us in jesus name we pray amen until tomorrow it's gonna be george's chapter 18 thank you all for being here have a great week if you're just getting in it has been a beautiful day so far so i can assure you that the week is stupendously beautiful <laughs>